What are some psychology experiments with interesting results? Hedonic adaptation. Put simply, a person who had just won the lottery and another person who had just been paralyzed took a survey to measure their life contentment. Obviously it was high and low, respectively. However, they both took the same survey a year later and both scored similarly. The point being that regardless what happens to you in life, good or bad, you will always adapt and spend most of your life feeling neutral. One time I participated in a paid research experiment. I was basically tricked into thinking I was drunk. I was placed in a room with two other people and we were instructed to drink vodka with cranberry juice over a period of time while we socialized. After we drank I was placed in a room where I had to read some flashing words on a computer. I felt pretty drunk at this point. When the researcher came back into the room he gave me my car keys and said I was never actually given alcohol. He briefly told me that because I was anticipating drinking for this experiment that my brain had tricked me into feeling the effects of being intoxicated. I immediately snapped out of it and was completely amazed at how I felt. Split Brain Studies One example, by providing differing information to each hemisphere of the brain in split brain individuals. Those with a severed corpus callosum, meaning there's no communication between the two hemispheres, they found that people would actually physically grab their own hand with their other hand if they saw it making a mistake. Basically each side of the brain controls one side of your body, and in split brain people you can actually make both sides display disagreement with the other. Which is insane, if you think about it. I don't know the name of it but apparently two people become closer if they survive through something together. Not even actual surviving death scenarios but anything that has you on your toes and heart racing, like a roller coaster. Aaron and Dutton, 1974, Misattribution of Arousal. Men who had just walked across bridge, either steady or unsteady, were approached by a female psychology student, posing to do a project on the effects of exposure to scenic attractions on creative expression. The men had to complete a questionnaire and write a short dramatic story about a picture she provided and she gave them her phone number if they had more questions. Men who walked across the shaky bridge were more likely to call her up because they misattributed the arousal from the bridge to the woman. TLDR, watch a horror movie on the first date. Edit, grammar. Sorry about the confusion. It's not that psychopaths lack empathy, but rather, they have the manual settings. A specific region of the brain lights up when people experience empathy. For most people it's an automatic, subconscious, response. But in a study where they showed emotional videos to psychopaths and non while scanning their brains, psychopaths would only light that region of the brain when specifically asked to feel for the character, while the control participants would light up automatically. The Rosenthal Effect, the prejudice and expectations you have towards a student slash contestant slash etc. Highly dictates his performance in the long run. Look it up, aka Pygmalion Effect. Not a psychologist, but the one where given a choice between sitting down doing nothing and shocking oneself, people tend to choose the shock. Ergo, we would choose pain over boredom. Reconsolidation, when you retrieve a memory from your long-term memory it is susceptible to being manipulated. This can lead to, to memories being totally changed from the source. This is why eyewitness accounts cannot be fully seen as true. This knowledge is also being used to help people with PTSD by changing the negative memories they have of their particular trauma. If people have the upper hand they will put others down to keep it. An experiment told a class of kids that having blue eyes meant you were smarter, achieved more etc. All of a sudden kids with blue eyes formed their own groups. Things like bullying and exclusion of other eye colors started too. They repeated the experiment with different eye colors in different classes, all with the same results. Velp the salmon study. To test a behavioral procedure in an MRI machine the experimenters got a dead salmon to use as a dummy. As it had to be something organic. They were in shock when they discovered that the FMRI was recording increased bold response, blood oxygen level dependent, in the dead salmon when running their experiment, suggesting this dead salmon's brain was somehow reacting to the experiment. This led to the findings that FMRI is not perfect and we should expect a certain level of false positives. Highlight the importance of retests and tighter statistical analyses. 
There was an experiment to measure the dopamine, EA happiness, hit your brain takes when eating something you're craving. The dopamine builds with the anticipation and peaks right as you take the first bite. Then, after the first moment it's in your mouth, the dopamine levels begin to decrease. This showed that many times we are desiring, edited to show the distinction made by poster below, the attainment of the thing more than the thing itself. Edit, not to proselytize, but this corresponds somewhat to the Buddhist principle of unsatisfactory desire. It's very interesting. I loved learning about infant development. My favorite was probably the development of depth perception or perhaps the fear of heights. We're not born with it but, if I recall correctly, we develop it within the first year or so. Scientists created a raised square platform, half of the floor was wood and the other glass. The actual surface of the floor, one meter or so below, was white with red polka dots. At varying intervals of age the babies would be brought in and placed on the wood end and encouraged to crawl to their moms who were standing at the glass end of the platform. In early infancy baby crawls over there without giving a shit. At some point though they stop at the point where the wood meets the glass, or plexiglass maybe showing that they recognize the difference in height and the fear of falling. Babies' brains are pretty fucking cool. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more.